This covert biological and chemical warfare unit of the Imperial Japanese Army was active during the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II. Unit 731 was mostly responsible for the more atrocious war crimes carried out by the Japanese during the war years. Some of the atrocities they carried out included amputating and reattaching limbs, leaving gangrene untreated to study its effects, and the vivisection of human prisoners, including pregnant women who had been impregnated by their doctors. Prisoners were also injected with disease strains disguised as vaccines, as well as acting as test cases for flamethrowers and grenades. Zimbardo's famous Stanford prisoner experiment took 24 undergraduate students, assigned them roles as either prisoners or guards, and placed them in a mock prison setting on campus. After only a few days, around one-third of the guards had begun to exhibit sadistic tendencies. Two of the prisoners had to be removed due to emotional trauma, and the whole thing was only able to run for six out of the planned 14 days, showing how quickly normal people can become abusive if the situation encourages it. Albert Klickman was a dermatologist who ran a comprehensive experimental program on Holmesburg prison inmates during the 60s. In one U.S. Army-sponsored experiment, Klickman was charged with finding ways to harden the skin, working on the hypothesis that hardened skin could protect soldiers from chemical attacks in combat zones. Klickman gave inmates various chemical-packed creams to use with the only effects being permanent, horrific scarring and searing pain. Not exactly a resounding success. However, Pharmaceutical companies continued to pay Kligman, who once claimed that he saw not people, but merely acres of skin when looking at his test subjects. He later became incredibly rich by inventing an acne cream, while the prisoners of Holmesburg Prison were never compensated. This experiment was carried out on 22 orphaned children in Davenport, Iowa in 1939. Wendell Johnson at the University of Iowa chose a graduate student, Mary Tudor, to conduct the actual experiment. After placing the kids into control and experimental groups, Tudor gave positive speech therapy to half of the children, admiring the fluency of their speech, and negative speech therapy to the other half, belittling the children for every speech imperfection and telling them they were stutterers. Many of the normal-speaking orphan children who received negative therapy in the experiment suffered negative psychological effects, and some retained speech problems during the course of their life. Eventually, given the moniker of the Monster Study by Johnson's peers, they were horrified that he would experiment on orphan children to prove a theory, and the University of Iowa eventually apologized for it in 2001. The Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis was a clinical study which carried on for 40 years in Tuskegee, Alabama. 399 mostly illiterate African-American men were denied treatment for syphilis. Without offering due care for its subjects, the study did not give the men adequate information about their condition telling them instead that they had bad blood. The purpose of this study had been to investigate whether treatments for syphilis, most of which were toxic when the study began, were actually more effective than leaving it untreated. By the end of the study, only 74 of the test subjects were still alive. 28 had died directly of syphilis, 100 were dead of complications, 40 of their wives had been infected, and 19 of their children had been born with congenital syphilis. In the late 1800s, Emma Eckstein came to noted psychiatrist Sigmund Freud to be treated for a nervous illness. After diagnosing her with hysteria and excessive masturbation, Freud took the advice of Wilhelm Fleiss, whom believed that the condition could be treated by cauterizing the nose. He then proceeded to conduct an experimental procedure on Eckstein, where he burned her nasal passages, leaving her with terrible infections and a permanent disfigurement as a result of Fleiss leaving surgical gauze in her nasal passages. A Cincinnati physician named Dr. Roberts Bartholow sent an electric current straight into the brain of one of his patients as an experiment. In 1847, he was treating a patient named Mary Rafferty who was suffering from an ulcer in the skull. The ulcer was so severe that her brain became visible. With her permission, Bartholow inserted electrodes directly into her brain and applied varying currents in order to observe her reactions. Repeating his experiment eight times over a four-day period, Rafferty seemed fine at first. However, she became frantic during the later stages of the tests and soon went into a coma, which shortly afterward, she died. The resulting backlash led to Bartholow leaving his job and receiving a senior teaching position at Jefferson Medical College. Milgram's shock experiments showed just how far normal people would go when an authority figure ordered them to hurt someone. 
The study, carried out by Stanley Milgram in the 60s, brought in volunteers who believed they would be administering shocks to another test subject. The doctor ordered them to deliver greater and greater shocks to the point where the other test subject would be screaming in agony and, in some extreme cases, dying. In reality, the other subjects were actors hired by Milgram, and the experiment proved how far people would go in their obedience to authority. Many of the participants later claimed to have been traumatized for life after being shown how capable they were of inhumane, brutal behavior. The medical atrocities carried out by SS doctors at their concentration camps are undoubtedly some of the most horrifying ever carried out and have made Dr. Joseph Mengele. His obsessive work on Jewish twins at Auschwitz, where he would conduct experiments on one in order to kill both and carry out comparative autopsies, are truly sickening. But what may surprise most is how much Mengele's research reportedly benefited medical science. A lot of our understanding of how hypothermia and the cold affects humans is based on this data, and many have raised questions about the morality of using these studies, gathered under such horrific circumstances. At the height of the Cold War, the CIA was engaged in a top-secret and, quite illegal, human research program investigating potential mind control systems. The operators used numerous techniques to manipulate people's mental states and alter brain functions, including the surreptitious administration of drugs like LSD and other chemicals, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, as well as various forms of torture. Some suggest that the program was designed as a pilot scheme for programming potential assassins. In 1973, then-CIA Director Richard Helms ordered that all documents from Project MKUltra be destroyed. A formal investigation was later launched, but without the documentation, it was made incredibly difficult. Many suggest that CIA mind control experiments continue to this day, merely using a different acronym, but with their veil of secrecy, we may never know for sure.